Uh, this is from Obsidian Ant, titled uh, Planet Controversy. Invisible walls, worlds have boundaries. Did anybody not think this was a thing? I was 100% sure this was a thing in Starfield. It was very obvious to me that the play area was going to be grounded because you weren't allowed to fly your ship on the surface of the planet. It was very No Man's Sky. Well, not even No Man's Sky. Because No Man's Sky allowed you to fly around a bit. But the you just chose a place to land and land there. And then if you wanted to land somewhere else, you would fly up, choose another place to land, and then land there. I, I always kind of expected that. That was going to be the limitations of actually delivering a game, unlike something else. So let's see what, uh, what actually is happening, because I... I've heard that this is a controversy, but I don't know the details. And Obsidian is usually my guy to go to outside of uh, Star Citizen News. There's some news. controversy surrounding Starfield and its planets. You may have heard of some of this, and some of you may not. But I think it's something we really need to talk about. Todd Howard did an interview in November 2022 saying this wasn't a thing. In what way, though? Like, did he say you were going to be able to walk from one place on a planet all the way around to the other or something? Because you can traverse the entire planet via using the ship to get in and out is how I always thought it was going to be. So we saw that there was um, like a map that said, oh, there's copper over here and there's gold over there. Well, okay, you can go to the copper first, fly back up and then fly down to the gold is, is sort of how I envisioned the game based off of everything that I've seen so far. But we do have an issue where we don't have all the information, and now people are leaking their NDAs and things like that, and we're getting more inf information. This is Twitter controversy, obviously, because we don't have all the info yet because we're not playing the game. Uh, I'm not disappointed with this. This is basically what I expected. I think the game can still be fun without having fully explorable planets. I play a game called Star Citizen that has fully explorable planets, and it fucking sucks. So it doesn't matter. If there's nothing to do, I don't need to fully, fully explore nothing. So I'm totally fine with that. Well, now, you would have noticed I put controversy in quotes in the video title, and I did this for a reason. And we'll get to those reasons slightly further into the video. Now, I'm going to break this video down into three segments. First, okay. I will talk about the issue itself. Second, I will talk about the general reaction towards the issue. And third, I will give my own personal thoughts on the subject. All right. So let's start with the issue itself. Now it turns out that planetary surfaces in a starfield are not seamless. That in fact, planets are broken down into regions or tiles. Each tile is a map that can take up to 40 minutes to walk across. That's similar to the time frame to walk across the map in Skyrim. Now, okay, so hold up. This was August 21st, 2023. Um, Bethesda, DC Deacon, Starfield game. When I land on a planet, will I be able to explore that whole entire planet? Yup, if you want, walk on Blave Explorer. This is Pete Hines. We saw him at Gamescom. I'm pretty sure. Talking about the game. Yikes! In terms of specifics, this information originally came from leaks. However, Why it has can't since been confirmed the by Tom Henderson of the gaming website Insider Gaming. Although like he literally didn't have to respond to some random... Did, did that guy have a blue check mark, by the way? Did the guy who posted this tweet have a blue check mark? Okay, good. Then he can respond to him. Personally, I don't have review access to the game, and this means I have to take... Whoa! Obsidian doesn't have review access to this game? What? Tom had his word. It's up to each of you to decide what you want to do with that. Now, all that How? said, I have seen dozens of screenshots from the review copies of Starfield, and to my eyes, these screenshots do indeed look legitimate. However, I cannot verify or guarantee that. But one screenshot in specific does stand out, and it's a screenshot which started a lot of this off. And unfortunately, I can't show that screenshot. But it has a message actually in the game. The wait, 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 wait. Reached He's not showing the leaks. This is my favorite part. They gave early access to people, made them sign an NDA, and 
They leak. He won't even show the leaks because Obsidian is that good of a guy. The edge of the map and then That's this so message stupid. appears. Boundary reached. Open the map to explore another region or return to your ship. This message allegedly appears when a player walks a long distance okay. from their spaceship and then hits the edge of the map tile. Now, Tom Henderson has said at this point, players need to head back to their ship to get to the next region. However, the message itself quite clearly says you can use the map screen to access the next region. Further tweets from Tom state the following. Planets have between three to five fixed landing zones. These are points of interest such as cities. Players are free, however, to land anywhere they want on a planet. And we can see that in the yeah, footage right here. This is what I thought The player would be simply a thing. creates a landing beacon at which they can land at. The game then creates a new point of interest landing zone. Tom Henderson then claims that players have a limited number of custom landing zones. After they hit this number, the first custom landing zone is removed. It's not entirely clear to me what this means, so I'm not going to speculate. Now, all this said, it is still possible to fully explore the entire planet, and planets are broken down into dozens, if not hundreds of tiles. So yes, this means players can still explore every part of the planet. Now, at this point, you may be wondering why you've seen not very few YouTubers actually make videos on this. Okay. The reason for that is... Sorry. What wife text? I got a little bit taken away. If you don't mind, I'm going to go back again and listen to, to some of it, because I don't want to miss what he is. was saying. Players are free, however, to land anywhere they want on a planet, and we can see that in the footage right here. The player simply creates a landing beacon at which they can land at. Yep. The game then creates a new point of interest landing zone. Tom Henderson then claims that players have a limited number of custom landing zones. After they hit this number, the first custom landing zone is removed. It's not entirely clear to me what this means, so I'm not going to speculate. Now, all this said, it is still possible to fully explore the entire planet, and planets are broken down into dozens, if not yeah. hundreds of tiles. You just gotta hit so up yes, a tile. This means players can still explore every part of the planet. Now, at this point, you may be wondering why you've seen not very few YouTubers actually make videos on this. The reason for that is very clear. Those who have review access to the game are under NDA. Yeah. And that means legally, they cannot talk about this issue. So this is why you won't see many videos on the subject. From my point of view, I do want to make one thing very, very clear. I'm not interested in creating a drama. This video isn't intended Doesn't as feel clickbait. Dramatic. This video is not here for the clicks. If I wanted to create hundreds of thousands of views, then I would have used a more provocative title and I would be approaching things in a very different way. So yeah, creating drama certainly isn't the intention here. So what is my intention? Well, I believe that people have a right to know what's going on with any game before they actually buy it. And I'll get into my own reasons and my own thoughts on this very shortly. First though, there's another question. Have Bethesda been lying about Starfield? Well, point of fact, no. Back on the Alex Friedman No, but then you see that tweet which I showed, that sucks, cast, man. Todd Howard was very clear that planets are broken down into tiles. Okay. And so we did find a way, we came up with a way um, had prototyped of of building tiles, like large tiles of landscape, the was way we would was usually Lex build them. Friedman? We kind of generate them offline, hand do some things, and end up with these very realistic looking tiles of landscape, and then built a system that wraps those around a planet mm -hmm. and blends them all together. Now, different people have interpreted that in different ways over the past few months, but for those of you who have watched my previous videos, you'll be well aware that I've been, often been of the opinion that this may be suggesting that the world was broken down into regions. Ultimately though, whichever way you look at it, that statement was just not as clear as it really should have been. Later in the Starfield Showcase, Bethesda said players will generally be exploring around their ship, a very specific way to describe exploring planetary surfaces. We love exploration and rewarding it, but you do explore differently in this game, given its scale. That usually involves exploring an area you've landed in. And then later, exploring very recently, in fact, Pete Hines, head of publishing at Bethesda, in a tweet suggested that planets are indeed fully explorable. However, what they all failed to mention in each of these cases is that there are transitions or loading screens between these tiles and that planets are not seamless. 
The bottom line here is that Bethesda have not been lying about this. No. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not covering for them, but facts are facts. Yeah. They have specifically stated that planets are tiled. However, but Bethesda have also on. not been... And the problem is, is that guy was a publishing guy, right? He's not one of the people who made the game. And, like, he, the guy said walk on. And that was the biggest problem, is you can't walk between tiles been very clear about exactly how this would work. It would have been very easy for them to point it out in the showcase that planets are indeed broken down into regions and you would need to transition across those regions. So assuming that this is indeed true, that planets are broken down into tiles and you need to transition across regions, well in that case I would fully agree that it's a mistake that Bethesda did not mention this. Now moving on to the other two sections of this video, they're both going to be a relatively short Okay. Firstly, player reactions, community reactions out on the internet. Yeah. To be perfectly clear, oh, the reaction fun. hasn't been massive. There's not thousands and millions of people all stampeding or complaining about this, but there are a fair few. Because they've all played Star Citizen, and no, it doesn't add anything to the game, really. The, the idea of being able to walk forever in a vastness of nothing doesn't do anything to make the game better. It's also possible that Doesn't come matter. release, there may be a few more people who feel as though they've been misled about this subject. We've had it for years. The most years. common complaint then is that a lot of people have felt that planets might be very similar to what they're like in Elite Dangerous or No Man's Sky. That's once you've landed in one location, you can just keep walking seamlessly right around the entire planet until you come to either a boundary such as a ocean or a mountain you can't get over, or otherwise simply walk all the way back in a complete circle back to your ship again. For the people who feel that this way, it really is all about immersion to them. Yeah. The idea of living in a fully a seamless world. and the Yeah, and I guess what I'm saying is, is it, it doesn't matter to me. I, some people love that stuff. I don't know how, um, but some people love that shit. ability to just completely explore that without any hindrance or without any loading screen. A few other people feel it's a matter of principle and whilst some are outright incorrectly claiming that Bethesda have lied about this, others feel perhaps more reasonably that Bethesda have misled people. Again, of course, assuming that all of this is true. And you then know, there's a selection of people who... Here, here's my favorite part about all this, okay? You watch this, you, you expect all this realism as somebody jumping into Starfield and get mad that you can't walk across giant tiles of nothingness to the next tile instead of getting in your ship and taking 10 seconds to do it yourself. But blowing up a ship, having a box, opening it up in a UI and clicking two buttons and having it end up in your ship magically is totally fine. We've seen all the other things on the trailer, but that's what we're going to focus on. Look at this clip. And then there's a selection of people who feel that Here, this, I have to go back a little farther. In a fully a seamless, completely clean. A few other people feel it's a matter of principle. Watch this and clip. whilst some are outright incorrectly claiming that Bethesda have lied about this, others feel perhaps Close more reasonably up, that Bethesda have... Opens the box, clicks a couple buttons, the shit magically ends up in the ship with no animation. I don't even see a tractor beam doing it. Misled it's people. Click, click and it's Again, of ship. course, assuming that all of this is true. And then there's a selection of people who feel that this isn't a major issue because ultimately it's not a players sim. can still explore the entirety of a planet's surface, albeit with transitions or some type of loading screen. And finally, there seems to be a load of people out there that just don't care one way yeah, or another. Exactly. All who they gives want a shit? is a quality game. Yep. So these are the four main different perspectives that Here's I what I think. I have played a game that tried to do this, and that game is not a quality game. Both Elite Dangerous, both Star Citizen, maybe even a little bit No Man's Sky. There's a lot of things that aren't great by doing things like that, and you lose a lot by doing that. And I'm glad that Todd and team maybe looked at some of these issues and went, well, we can't do it like that because look at them. And if we want to get this game done and we want to deliver anything, we got to try something different. And they tried something different. And to be honest, that's not going to break anything for me, most likely. Depends on how big those tiles are, right? As long as the tiles are big enough to feel large and immersive that you're traveling on a big planet, whatever that is, you know, X amount of kilometers by X, I'm fine. I've seen expressed across the internet, whether it's YouTube, 
forums or of Reddit. But that's why they don't have ground vehicles. Of course, vehicles. that doesn't 100%. express or, con or cover every single opinion out there. But yeah, like I said, these do seem to be the main ones. Now, what do I think about all of this? Well, I feel that, yes, I can entirely understand why some people would feel that they've been misled over this. Bethesda mm -hmm. haven't been entirely clear about it. But also feel that Bethesda haven't lied. Far from it, in fact. Back in the Flex Friedman podcast, Todd Howard sounds was like they were very clear. clear. Players are planning. But they shouldn't be clear about that only on the Lex Friedman podcast, right? They should be clear everywhere. That should be in a FAQ somewhere. It's are broken down into tiles. He just didn't say that you'd have to have a loading screen between these Bro, tiles. How did Obsidian Some not people get might a key? feel that's lying through omission. That's I don't so really see it mind. that way. Although that said, I do understand why some people might feel misled. My personal take on all of this, of though, Fair is enough. that ultimately it doesn't bother me. I don't think it's a major cause for concern. We got these maps, again, assuming this is all true, we've got these maps that take at least 40 minutes to get across. That means that these maps are around about the same size as the map in Skyrim. This is truly massive. Now, if each planet only had one of these maps, that would mean 1,000 different maps the size of the one in the Skyrim. But planets aren't limited to just one of these maps. Instead, each planet is potentially broken down into dozens, maybe even yeah, hundreds, of maps of this scale. So yes, it's a truly massive game. The fact that there's a loading screen or some type of boundary between these really doesn't bother me at all. Ultimately though, I do think it would be much better if we could just load into the map screen to transition across these boundaries as it would be a bit of a hassle if we've got to return back to the ship each time to get to the next region. Also, we're on the question and the subject as to what these maps will contain. Well, Bethesda have said that 90% of planets are going to be back. Now, are they procedurally generating what is in these tiles as you're going down to them? I feel like I've heard that. So there's potentially story-based things that are randomly popping up, procedurally generated, so you're not feeling super empty, but sometimes you probably are. Aaron, so we know right? that for the... I mean, they've shown it in so many clips, like the one we Most just part, saw. Many of these maps cool. will have I think this nothing is on them aside from resources to collect. On paper, that means it would like be very silly, really, and unreasonable to expect each of these maps, each of these regions, to be as fully detailed as something like Skyrim or Fallout 4. Personally, I'm expecting each area to just have a whole bunch of different activities, such as small little dungeons and settlements, as well as other such things to discover, as well as numerous encounters. In other words, similar to when you go out into the wilds in Skyrim, and the small encounters or mid-sized encounters that you can have there. And finally, there's one other point I want to talk about. This is a subject that Bethesda have mentioned numerous times. The fact that players, each player, will have a different experience on the same planet. Mm -hmm. In other words, if two different players go to the same location on the same planet, they will both see something different. So what? Now, there's been some uh, divided... I think that who cares? We'll all have very similar experiences. Yeah, that's like literally they they are taking the single player game experience and making it not crap. Like that's actually good. The uh the idea of yes, we will all share very similar experiences on the main story, but we're never going to have the same experience in side quests necessarily or we will. What I think will happen is most likely we'll have the same experience with uh i don't know you know the uh the fan or whatever the adoring fan like we'll all experience that guy but it sounds like yeah there's more replayability and i i think that there'll be side quests that will be similar but maybe we'll get them at different locations that's that's all i'm thinking opinions over exactly what this means some people no, have we assumed you only experience if you get the perk same with oblivion gotcha this means that the terrain is the same for each player but the settlements and the other things that spawn in will be different for each player. Yeah, I'm looking Personally, forward to Personally, my building. thought on this has always been that the terrain, that the regions themselves, will always be different for player to player. Again, pure speculation here on my part as I don't know. I haven't had hands on with the game. But based on what we've heard so far on these claims that the planets are broken down into regions, it seems to me that if each region is procedurally generated, then it's very likely they're going to be different for each player. Again, this isn't really something that I see as a problem, at least not for me, although I'm sure it may be a little bit of an issue or maybe a major issue for some people out there.
Oh, oh and there was like one other be. thing I did see out there. Again, I don't know how true this is, but it seems that there are loading screens all over Starfield. On the planets, you cross one region, you may hit a loading screen. There's also loading screens, apparently, to get inside your ship and exit your ship. Who and cares? then, of course, we also don't know if there's transitions from a planet to planet when you're up in space flying Who your cares? ship. We don't know if you're free to fly from planet to planet. Instead, it appears at least you may have to use that grab Thank drive. You, Vertex. Get there as a mode of fast travel as such. Ultimately, then, that's pretty much Again, every played Star Citizen. Don't need it. Everything that we know so far about uh, what's going on with Starfield. Unfortunately, none Doesn't of this the is better. official confirmation. We don't have hands-on with the game. But I think uh, people like Tom Henderson generally are very trustworthy and have always posted good information in the past. For me, I'm going to take his word at what has been said about Starfield. Although, of course, for you, each of you, you really need to come up your, to your own mind and your own decisions about that. Do let me know in the comment section below what you think about all of this. Do you feel... Obsidian trying to tell the internet to speak for themselves and have their own thoughts. Good luck with that. That planets being broken down into boundaries and regions is a problem. Or do you think it's no real issue at all? Do let me know in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and girls next time. All right. Great video. I mean, I will again just go ahead and say there is absolutely no problem with loading screens. I have absolutely no problem with tiles i think this is the better choice i think this is the right choice based on my experiences being a star citizen backer i've went through all those experiences and i don't think they have been very enjoyable um the idea of making a a you know completely seamless world with no loading screens makes you make everything super far from each other and makes artificial loading screens like you know, locked travel, like where you're basically stuck in an elevator and you can feel the planets loading in while you're, it, it's, it, you know, quantum travel in Star Citizen is a loading screen. Sure, we don't have to load in um, from the orbit of a planet or moon to its surface, which is actually pretty sick. It's, it's cool the first couple times, but then it isn't that cool anymore. And you realize it didn't add that much in the first place. And what it also does is make getting to the gameplay more difficult for a number of reasons. It takes time, and then it takes tons of server costs and client costs as well in terms of your graphics, your CPU, all that stuff gets used up more than it needs to, and it makes it harder to optimize the game. Where Starfield seems to have taken a different approach, and in my opinion, maybe it will be a better one. I, I, can't, I guess I can't really have an opinion on Starfield. I also didn't get a key, and that's not why I'm mad for Obsidian. I know they gave out a lot of keys to Star Citizen YouTubers, and um, Obsidian covers, like, all space games. It would just make sense. Like, he would have been my first people I would have person I would have gone to to give a key, but, uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting a key, to be honest. Um, but the uh, the idea of that system just makes more sense to me. So I think it'll be a lot better. You're underselling Star Citizen hard in terms of tech. It's still really impressive. When did I say it wasn't impressive? When did I say it's not impressive from a technological standpoint? It's very cool. All, I'm just speaking from a gamer perspective. It doesn't make the game good. And all it does is make the game harder to make, which is why we're here. So... Starfield releasing, Squadron 42 not. There might be a reason for it.